Are you ready for the next version of Starship? A lot of people probably are by now. But are you ready for the version after that? Even though Starship V3 is set to debut in about a month, Elon Musk has already started teasing the next evolution, Starship V4. So what will this version be like, and how big a leap could it be? Just a couple of days ago, Elon Musk announced that the upcoming Starship version 4, Block 4, will be 10 to 20% longer than the current models. Responding to a viral scale comparison image, Musk explained that this stretch is intended to significantly increase payload capacity, marking another major evolution in SpaceX's fully reusable rocket designed for lunar and Martian missions. The current Starship upper stage is a little over 50 meters tall. A 20% increase would push that length to roughly 60 meters, making it even taller than the Space Shuttle stack, which stood 56 meters, 184 feet on the launch pad, including its external fuel tank and solid rocket boosters. If the Starship payload section alone were stretched by around 10 meters, payload volume could increase from about 1,000 cubic meters to as much as 1,800 cubic meters. However, if part of that added length is allocated to additional propellant, the payload volume increase would likely be closer to 1,400 cubic meters. Interestingly, these estimates closely align with a slide Elon Musk shared some time ago. The slide shows versions 1 and 2, with version 3 expected to fly for the first time by the end of this year. Next to version 3 appears a noticeably larger Starship version 4. According to that slide, this future configuration features an 81-meter-tall super-heavy booster paired with a 61-meter-tall Starship upper stage, bringing the total vehicle height to an impressive 142 meters. Even more impressive, the slide suggests that Starship version 4 could lift 200 tons, or possibly even more, into orbit. That's an enormous number. So the big question is, can a rocket that's only about 20% longer really do that? To find out, let's do a simple reality check without diving too deep into math. First, assume Starship is a two-stage rocket and that each stage is very efficient. About 90% of each stage's mass is fuel, while the remaining 10% is structure, like tanks and engines. This is a reasonable assumption and is actually achievable with modern rocket design. To keep things realistic, we slightly increase each stage's mass to account for that structure. Next, we assume the engines perform similarly to SpaceX's Raptor engines. The first stage is a bit less efficient because it flies through the atmosphere, while the second stage is more efficient because it operates in space. These are conservative assumptions, meaning they don't push the engines to unrealistic limits. Using these values, we apply the rocket equation to see how much speed the vehicle can generate while carrying a 200-ton payload. The result is a total velocity of just over 9 kilometers per second. To reach low Earth orbit, a rocket usually needs about 9.3 to 9.5 kilometers per second once gravity and atmospheric losses are included. That means our result is very close to what's required. In other words, a 200-ton payload is physically possible under these assumptions. What's even more interesting is that these assumptions aren't extreme. Rockets like Falcon 9 already achieve similar or better fuel efficiency, and older rockets like Titan 2 matched this performance decades ago. If both stages achieve a propellant mass fraction of 0.90 or better, a payload of 200 tons or more becomes feasible, and improving the structure slightly would only increase that margin. Of course, you can make Starship longer all you want, but the real heavy lifting is done by the engines. Without the Raptor engine, Starship would be far heavier and far less capable. Many people assume that pushing a much heavier rocket would require SpaceX to invent an entirely new engine. Surprisingly, that's not the case. The latest Raptor V3 is already powerful enough. SpaceX simply needs to add more of them. Starship version 4 is expected to use 42 Raptor engines in total, including three additional engines on a much longer upper stage. These new engines are vacuum-optimized Raptors, known as Raptor Vacuum, RVAC engines. RVAC engines are based on the standard Raptor, but feature much larger, regeneratively cooled nozzles designed to perform efficiently in space. Their target performance is around 380 seconds of specific impulse, which is extremely high for a methane engine. At the center of the upper stage, Starship still uses three sea-level Raptors. 
These engines can gimbal, meaning they swivel to steer the vehicle, and they can restart in flight, which is critical for landing burns. The new engine layout builds on the familiar triangular design but expands it significantly. The updated configuration places three C-level Raptors in the center, surrounded by six RVAC engines arranged in a hexagonal ring. This symmetrical layout improves structural stability and distributes thrust more evenly, reducing mechanical stress during ascent. One major advantage of Raptor V3 is that it no longer requires heavy heat shields or bulky fire suppression systems. That alone saves a massive amount of weight. With 42 Raptor engines and all their supporting hardware, engine mass becomes a big factor. Even so, the difference between engine versions is huge, over 150 metric tons for the original Raptor V1, compared to just over 70 metric tons for the much lighter Raptor V3. In fact, most of the performance gain between Starship V1 and V3 comes from lighter engines and simpler engine systems. For comparison, Starship V1 could lift about 15 tons to orbit, while Starship V3 is expected to lift around 100 tons. One last cool detail. Raptor V3 uses three D-printed cooling channels that allow extremely cold fuel to flow through the engine walls to manage heat. Cold, in this case, means around minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Traditional heat shields create enclosed spaces where dangerous gases can build up, which then require fire suppression systems. By eliminating the heat shields, SpaceX also eliminates the need for those systems, saving even more mass and complexity. So we know that the idea of future Starship versions growing 10 to 20% longer is very plausible. To be fair, SpaceX has already followed this exact pattern with Falcon 9, and lengthening a rocket is one of the simplest ways to increase propellant volume and payload without changing the diameter, tooling, or ground infrastructure too much. A longer Starship fits naturally with higher thrust Raptors, improved materials, and growing mission demands. Now, starting from that point, what about an even bigger version of Starship? Would that even be possible? Believe it or not, Elon has actually talked about this. He's mentioned a Starship variant with a staggering 18-meter diameter, double the width of the current design. This wouldn't just make it wider than Saturn V's 10-meter first stage and the Soviet N-1 rocket at 17 meters. It would crown it as the widest rocket ever built. Doubling the diameter means roughly quadrupling the internal volume for a vehicle of the same height. That alone could allow this version of Starship to carry four times more cargo or passengers than the current one. You could imagine launching an entire space station in a single mission. Of course, a jump this big comes with serious challenges. More volume means much more fuel, more structure, and therefore a huge increase in required thrust. This is probably where Raptor 3 starts to fall short. That's also when Elon has mentioned future engines like Raptor 3.X and Raptor 4, with around 300 tons of thrust at liftoff for the 3.X and even more for Raptor 4. But why does SpaceX even need all these huge versions of Starship? Is this some kind of weird flex? Well, I think we all know the answer. Everything about the Starship program serves SpaceX's ultimate goal, colonizing Mars. SpaceX wants to pre-deploy equipment before humans ever arrive, and having a higher thrust, higher capacity vehicle makes it much easier to deliver large, heavy payloads reliably and frequently. These first Mars vehicles will be ships only. Super Heavy will return to Earth shortly after liftoff for inspection and reflight. The initial missions will be uncrewed, but they won't be empty. They'll carry Optimus humanoid robots built by Tesla to begin preparing the surface. If those first missions go well, SpaceX plans to ramp things up quickly, sending around 20 ships to Mars. Musk has said, assuming the first missions are successful and they land successfully, we'd send humans on the next mission and really start building the infrastructure for Mars. He's also added that, just to be safe, they might do two landing cycles with Optimus and only send humans on the third. We'll see, as he put it. SpaceX has already been scouting potential locations for the first Mars city. The ideal site needs to be far enough from the frigid poles, have accessible water ice, and be relatively flat to allow safe landings and liftoffs. The leading candidate right now, according to Musk, is Arcadia Planitia, a volcanic plain in Mars's northern hemisphere. The end goal is a fully self-sufficient city on Mars, one that could survive even if it were somehow cut off from Earth. 
Such a city would likely house over a million people and require the transport of millions of tons of cargo across deep space. In Musk's vision, this city would be built and serviced by Starship, possibly most efficiently by a future version standing about 466 feet 142 meters tall when fully stacked. Once the city is mature, several thousand ship upper stages could be arriving and departing during each Earth-Mars launch window. But if SpaceX really moves to an 18-meter diameter starship, the story changes completely. An 18-meter version could carry roughly four times the payload, cutting the number of Mars-bound starships from around 1,000 to just 250. The number of tanker flights could drop by more than 3,750, potentially eliminating the need for orbital refueling depots altogether. That kind of scale-up wouldn't just make Mars colonization more feasible, it would radically streamline resource use. Building a sustainable Mars colony requires far more than just sending people. Infrastructure, habitats, food supplies, machinery, and spare parts all have to arrive in bulk. A larger starship would make that possible with far fewer launches, increasing reliability and ensuring the settlement has everything it needs to survive long term. At this point, there's still one big question left unanswered. Would Starship version 4 need an entirely new launch tower? Maybe. Pad B's tower and infrastructure haven't even been seen in full operation yet, so it's hard to judge how capable they'll ultimately be. But at least when it comes to an 18-meter starship, one thing is clear. SpaceX would almost certainly need a brand new production site tailored to something of this scale. That would mean building much larger mega bays, expanded tank farms, and thicker steel rings than anything currently in use. The launch and test infrastructure would also need to be rethought from the ground up. The existing launch pads and water deluge systems are unlikely to handle the extreme heat, vibration, and acoustic energy all at once. While SpaceX has a strong track record of rapidly upgrading its systems, achieving the level of robustness needed for such a colossal rocket is still a massive challenge. A good example is the current Mechazilla launch tower, which is designed to catch both Starship and the Super Heavy booster during landing. Trying to catch a vehicle with roughly four times the size and mass of today's Starship would be incredibly difficult, if not impractical. One possible solution would be to skip the tower entirely and return to a more traditional landing approach. Transportation is another major obstacle. No existing roads, barges, or routes are built to handle a vehicle of this size. To get around that, SpaceX would likely need to minimize transportation altogether by building and launching the rocket directly at its production site. 